Are you broke and in need of a job? I know, I know, it isn't easy these days because it's a tough economy. And I get it, you might get desperate and try anything like lying about your qualifications, or forging your resume, or trying supernatural experiments, and or putting yourself desperately on a billboard. Yeah. <laughs> Here are 10 ridiculous things people did to get a job. Number 10 is Marley Jones. Marley Jones was the Dean of Admissions for one of the most famous seats of learning in the world, the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. To gain such a prestigious profession, Marley had to prove herself academically to the highest of standards. Using all this experience, she also wrote a popular book for parents, helping guide their teens through the college admission process. The only tiny little problem with all this is that despite being hired by MIT in 1979, it was only discovered in 2000 2007 that to get the job she had fabricated her entire academic career. This involved and was not limited to forging degrees from Union College and Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute. But in a stroke of irony, Marley was famous for recommending that applicants do not pad their resumes. Yeah, no embellishing on your resume students, I mean you can completely lie and fabricate everything, but the things that are true do not embellish those, that would just be immoral. Number 9 is Lucas Ela. Lucas Ela moved to San Francisco from Lithuania in 2016 in order to land his dream job as a marketing specialist in the technology sector. Due to a lot of competition, Lucas resorted to some unusual techniques in order to get noticed. He actually drew up a list of companies that he was interested in working for and then dressed up as a delivery courier. He would enter the company buildings and then deliver a box of donuts to his potential bosses. Inside the box, alongside the donuts, the executives responsible for hiring people would find Lucas's resume penned to the inside of the box. And in doing so, Lucas actually managed to land 10 interviews for every 40 boxes delivered and was able to show his prospective boss's initiative and out of the box thinking before even getting an interview. Or I should say, in the box thinking. Hey, I'm not gonna lie, if I was hiring someone and they brought me some Boston creams, you best believe you win. <laughs> Number eight is Alex Brownstein. In 2010, Alex Brownstein used a sneaky technique to land a job with one of the biggest companies in the world. Alec realized that anyone of public note will occasionally Google their own name to see what people are saying about them. With that in mind, he took out a small ad on Google, which meant that when specific executives Googled their own names, his advertisement would appear first in the search rankings. This resulted in Ian Reichenthal, who was creative director at a powerful ad agency in New York City at the time, Googling his own name and finding an ad directly designed for him. Ian was so impressed with Alec's approach that he contacted him and offered him a position at the prestigious company. FYI, if I'm ever hiring, this will only work if you take out an ad with my real name. Shakespeare Rumblebum! Number 7 is Liz Hickok. Liz Hickok came up with a novel way to try to land a dream job in Alpharetta, Georgia. In December of 2011, she put up Christmas lights on her house like everyone else in her neighborhood. But what set hers apart was when she arranged the Christmas lights to display a message for any passerby. The message advertised Liz's need for a job in human resources as a Christmas wish, along with her name and a request to check out her LinkedIn profile. And the stunt worked, and before she knew it, Liz was receiving receiving interview offers from across the country and even as far as Italy. But she held off on these offers until she found something closer to her home in Atlanta. Wait, is this Christmas lights thing actually taking off? Because I'm about to ask NASA for a job. Or Santa to bring me a robot polar bear. I'm undecided. Number six is Scott Thompson. Scott Thompson was at one time the president of PayPal and then went on to become the CEO of Yahoo in January of 2012. Many of the positions that he held were granted to him because he was an expert in computer technology. Yeah, or so everyone thought. As it turns out, Scott Thompson had lied about having a degree in computer science. The truth was that he did have a degree, but that it was in accounting and had nothing to do with the tech industry. And once the media found out about this, they had a feeling 
real day, as Scott had set himself up as an important tech expert. With zero qualifications in that area, many felt that this reflected poorly on his ability to lead companies in the tech sector. But I wonder why. In addition, creating fake resumes meant that the companies associated with him were now marred by the controversy. PayPal, the safest way to shop online. I mean, we don't know who the hell we hire, but the safest way to shop online. Number five is Sheryl Crow. Not many people know that singer-songwriter Sheryl Crow's first big break was being a backup singer for Michael Jackson on tour. But she wasn't even supposed to be on that tour. She managed to bluff her way into getting the job. Cheryl moved to LA in the late 1980s where she was looking to get a job as a session musician and singer. After overhearing a group of singers talking about an upcoming Michael Jackson audition, she took the initiative to grab that job with both hands. Unfortunately, it was invite only, but that definitely didn't stop her. Cheryl walked into the building where her auditions were being held, signed a faked name on on a visiting sheet as if she'd been invited there and walked right past security. After that, she actually got the gig and toured all over the world with Michael Jackson. Yeah, that's some that's some real solid security you got there, whoever this company was. Number four is Leah Bowman. Landing that dream job is about standing out from the crowd and making an impression. And that's exactly what Leah Bowman did in 2014. She didn't just think outside the box, she put herself in it. When a potential employer asked Leah to give them an example of a creative sales pitch, she went to her childhood for inspiration. Leah was a massive fan of Lego and so she used Lego's digital designer to create and order a Lego set specific to her potential employer. The set was a a Lego version of herself and had written on it build the perfect intern on the box. With text describing how the Lego set was the missing piece needed to complete the employer's team, they instantly warmed to Leah's unique approach and gave her the job. Wait, can anyone order a Lego version of themselves? Cause <laughs> I've got an order to place. Number three is Mark Kirk. Being elected to government office relies on candidates being able to present their best selves to the public. But in the case of Mark Kirk, a United States Senator for Illinois, presenting his best self meant making up one or two little details. On his personal website in 2010, where he listed his achievements, he claimed to have been awarded Navy Intelligence Officer of the Year during his service in the Navy. Kirk then used this claim to support his assertion that he was highly qualified to discuss national security spending. However, in 2010, the Washington Post discovered that this singular Navy honor didn't actually exist. In reality, Kirk had been given a less impressive sounding award, but it had been given to the entire intelligence division for which he was a part. That's like someone saying that they're G.I. Joe when in actuality they just bought a G.I. Joe. So. Number two is Fila Mac and Yumura. Sometimes you just got to grab an employer's attention, and that's exactly what one man did in Ireland back in 2011. Fila Mac and Yumura was an unemployed commerce graduate at the time, and was so frustrated with trying to find a job in Ireland that he was considering leaving the country for good. In one last ditch effort before he left, Fila poured the last of his savings into renting a billboard above a busy road. On the billboard, he posted a picture of himself holding a suitcase and getting ready to leave Ireland for the United States. It was complete with the Statue of Liberty in the distance and everything. The billboard read, save me from emigration and included his email address. Not only did Phelan find a job, but he now makes appearances as a public speaker, giving talks on making things happen for yourself. Oh, you just put up a billboard there for yourself, diddly dee potato. And number one is Jill. In 2010, ABC News reported that a Seattle woman named Jill was using a bizarre tactic to land a job. Jill's second name wasn't given in order to protect her identity, and very shortly you're gonna find out why. You see, after trying out every conventional tactic in the book to find employment, Jill resorted to a series of supernatural experiments. First, she bought a floor cleaning product, which the makers claimed, when used in the home, gave the homeowner superpowers of persuasion. But 
But when this didn't work, Jill took to making a deal with a higher power. She'd make sacrifices in her life if the gods would grant her a job. This included going out with a man that she didn't find attractive and then finally giving up drinking. But hey, when she gave up drinking, she finally made progress in finding a job. Wow, there's some sort of correlation there, huh? <laughs>